Gym Atomy family meeting. And it's great to have everybody here. What a night to hear about some great vision speech and some having some Q&A and just being with the family. Can we have some thumbs up for that? The, the big thinkers for positivity, financial freedom, the healthy Atomy lifestyle. Let's go, let's go, let's go. But before yes. we start, we have to do our company motto, right? right? We have to do our company motto because that's our principle. All right, so is everybody ready? Yeah. Oh, yes! Let's go! Cherish the spirit! All right, well, thank you again for coming. We have a great opportunity today to hear from our very own, our new Royal Leaders Club and our star master, Darlene Kim. I knew her when she was rising up the ladder of success anatomy. I can't wait to hear all about her insights and her inspiration for all of us tonight. So without further ado, let's all welcome with a hearty, hearty cheer and anatomy loving welcome for our very own Royal Leaders Club star uh, star master Darlene Kim. Yeah. Yeah. Darlene. 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 Oh my darling. <laughs> oh my darling. <laughs> Hello everybody. Thank you, Sil. It's good to see all of you. I'd like to see your faces. Some familiar, oh, some new faces okay. here. How's the audio? Can you hear me okay? Yeah, very good. Very okay, good. very good, very good. Wow, you know, I get nervous every time, <laughs> every single time. But I think it's more like so excited because I always have something new to share. You know, the more you're active in Atomy, if not every day, at least every week, you learn something and you wanna share some more wisdom with everybody, right? So let me go ahead and um, get started and I'll share my PowerPoint. Just kind of keeps me on track here, okay. Okay, there we go. Now, sometimes when, I, when I'm thinking about what to say in a vision, I, um, in a group like this, I'm like, well, I want to make sure that I say something that connects with everybody, right? There's so much diversity now. We have new people on the Zoom. We have very high leaders on the Zoom. And what would I say? Well, I realized I can only say what I experienced, right? And what, what I've done and share the best parts of what I, what I think is helpful. So there's some kind of takeaway. But I love it that there's so many different vision speakers because you know, we're all human beings, we're not robots, right? So I love it because you can always connect somehow on a human level when it comes to Atomy. This is what I believe. Your actions are a demonstration of what you believe, not just what you say, but your actions reflect that. So everybody who's on the call or who's on the Zoom right now, even if you're brand new, you are here because you have felt something good about Atomy. Maybe it's intuition. Maybe it's the motto or something about the principles of the company or the products right? That, that gave you such a great uh, experience and testimony. There's some reason why you're here. And just for you attending tonight, it's reflecting to everybody that you believe something good is in, in anatomy. So I always say that when we try to do the business also, you know, sometimes when we express ourselves with words, it's what we feel. But actually, the actions demonstrate what you truly believe inside. And if you were like me, I started very skeptical. 
I think everyone does. And I think that's okay. So when you start to introduce Atomy to someone, if they're a little skeptical or a little negative, just remember how you started. Maybe you were the same way too. So we could be understanding of each other. So before I get into everything, I just want to remind everyone that every expert was a beginner at one time. So I hope that, you know, I don't think you're intimidated by me, but I know a lot of times when speakers come on, people, people tend to think, well, you know, I can't be like that. You don't have to be like somebody else. You have to be the best version of yourself. And the more you are in Atomy and the more you observe and the more you attend meetings, you'll see, wow, there's so many different types of leaders, right? And so just remember, all of us, no matter who you see, we started as a new person just like you at one time. This was my very first product. Can you imagine, you know, a toothbrush brought me here. <laughs> I'm sure you have a story about your first product also. We all do. So when I first met Atomy, this was my situation. Now, I first met the product. I had somebody give me a free toothbrush. So I used the product, I was impressed by the product, and I didn't even know it was a business opportunity. But then later on, this was my situation. I had resigned from a corporate job. I had um, switched careers, which meant I have to go back to school. So I was enrolled in school because I wanted to finish right away. I was full time. That means I could not get a job in between my classes. So I didn't have a job. I was living off of loans and credit cards, which did not feel comfortable, of course, as an older person. But that's what I had to do to switch careers. Now, my cousin's husband sent me an email and he had invited me. Well, first, he, he sent me the email and he said, here's the website for Atomy, the skincare products from Korea. So he sent me the website and then he says, you know, there's a, a seminar and it, I believe it was on a Monday. There's a seminar and I want to go. Do you want to come with me? So he invited me to a seminar. And because I came from a corporate background and I had an entrepreneurial spirit, it seemed like a business opportunity. So I went and that's where I met the Atomy business. Now, during that seminar, I saw the toothbrush that I was already using up on the screen. That's when I realized, hey, I'm already using a product. What is this? I was already using it because I liked it. And so it, it felt like there was a connection between me and this, this opportunity. So when I was at the seminar, I was so blown away by the information, by the details. It, it caught my attention. I saw the compensation plan and there were so many things about the compensation plan that I just saw a vision right away. And I'd like to share some of those things with you today. Number one, when I saw this, that there was no risk, I felt very comfortable and very safe to try an opportunity that I've never heard of before, never heard of that brand before, but because there was no risk, I figured, well, why not? And I think a lot of people here, maybe this is one of the reasons you felt comfortable to give this a shot, right? And then the more I looked into it, the more they spoke. It was, there was, it was a good ethical company with good principles. There was mutual benefit in the compensation plan. So I felt like there was, it was a righteous compensation plan. It was fair. It wasn't like I had to damage people in order to make money. So I just, I just felt very comfortable with what this is. But also in that moment, I realized, wow, this is a different kind of business. I've never heard of a business like this. So I liked it right away. Absolute quality, absolute price. You hear that all the time, right? And I'm like, well, that's great. That's good. That's what everybody wants. And then I started to research about the company and it seemed like an absolute company as well. Everything just, just felt right. And I said, there's something here. 
This is so different from any other opportunity, any other business that I've heard of. And I said, let me look more into it. So I was really drawn in as soon as I met Adami. I hope you are too. Now, when I heard about the referrals, that they were unlimited. Now, this is not like membership referrals. This is basically product referrals. If you like the product, you share it with someone else. And I'm like, I do that anyway. You know, I don't know if you're that type of person, but when you find something good, you know, you just can't keep it to yourself. You want to like call your friend, right? You want to tell somebody this, this great thing that you found. When I heard it was unlimited, that's amazing. You know, and then there was a global also, a global opportunity that you didn't have to uh, invest in. You didn't have to have big capital. It, it seems so amazing. And maybe I was naive at the beginning. You know, maybe I was just like, I'm all in, but I was, and I'm glad I was because if I was too skeptical, if I was imagining all these negative things that don't even exist, I wouldn't be here, right? I just focus on the facts. And to me, the way I saw it was like, wow, okay, if I like the products and I share with other people, it's basically like, I like this store, right? And I'm becoming a contractor for a brand I love. Now, on a normal basis, we do this anyway. And we, didn't, we don't really recognize that we do it. Like, for example, if you go to a restaurant, right? How many of you have gone to a restaurant, you really like it? And you end up being like a contractor for that restaurant because you're telling everybody about it. It's not like you're getting paid for it. You just have that heart to be like, I enjoyed something. I don't want other people to miss out. You know, they got to know about this restaurant. It's just too good, like to keep to yourself. And if you enjoyed it, you want other people to enjoy and you want to bring happiness to them too. So I saw it very simply. And I feel sometimes, you know, in Atomy, it is actually simple. But we tend to make it more complicated by ourselves. Sometimes our thinking makes it complex, right? And then when I heard about PV, I wasn't used to the talk about points or, you know, anything like that. But I said, like, hmm, you get points from the products that you purchase. And then if you're happy about it and, you know, you're getting benefit from it and you share it with other people, then they would also get the points and the company would, as a thank you to you for starting this like uh, chain reaction, right, of happy consumers. And it didn't matter if it was direct or indirect. I was like, this is so generous. I thought it was just a, a genius system, you know, to share the good and share the bread. And then they talked about residual income. To be honest with you, I didn't really know what residual income was. But when they were talking about we have residual bills that we can't stop, why not have residual income, right, to cover those bills that you can't stop? So I learned about residual income and I was like, I love that idea. That's great. And plus, we're not doing any harm to anyone, we're actually sharing the good and, and you can make income doing that. Amazing. I saw this definition about residual income and what's the difference? Money earned long after the active work has been completed. That makes sense. And income generated while you are no longer on the clock because you put the effort in. And sometimes this is called um, delayed gratification, right? You put the work in and then you, maybe you get paid later. But it makes sense if you understand regular businesses too. You have to do the work, right? So you're building something that can last a long time. It makes sense for anything. If you build a house, right? You're building something and you're gonna enjoy it long after. And you're hoping that whatever you build lasts a long time. And when they talked about residual income, I got the idea of time freedom and money freedom as well. 
And I really wanted that because I've, I've been working since I was young and I've worked in corporations where you, you know, they give you, they, they say they give you many weeks of vacation, but actually I would lose vacation because I wasn't able to get approved to take it in the time that I wanted. So it's, it felt very limited, you know, your time's limited when you want to take off. And um, I started to feel that I started to feel that. And I'm like, well, time freedom would be great and money freedom. Um, I did not grow up with a lot of money. Um, I had always dreamed, like, I don't want to worry about money so much because it was a worry for me. I don't know if that's the same with everyone else, but worrying about money was a big stressor for me. So then they said, well, a consumer <clears throat> and a business person, it's the same. We don't have two different memberships in Atomy. You just sign up for membership. It gives you access to buy directly from the company. And any consumer can start the business at any time. Wow. I didn't feel pressure. I felt uh, a lot of freedom, you know, to decide. I didn't have a time limit of like, you have to decide in a certain time if you're going to do the business or not. Nobody was pressuring me like that. So I feel like because I wasn't pressured, I felt more comfortable to go for it. So in the beginning, <clears throat> I wanted to make sure that these products were something that I could represent. So I started to buy the products and experience it myself. And I hope that you do that too. Because <clears throat> I don't want to encourage anyone to do the business if you are not impressed with the products, if you are not like in love with these products, if you don't see the benefit of the, the products that we have, okay? You're not gonna be able to be successful doing the business. So try the products first. If you're really impressed and if you really like these products, you will be successful because you'll be representing something that you love and you'll be authentic about it. Now, if you try to promote something that you don't believe in, I do feel like it's not authentic and people will feel that. People will notice, not everybody maybe, right? But over time, you're not gonna feel good either promoting something that you don't believe in. I think we all have a conscience and it's gonna get to you, okay? So try the products first. If you are impressed with it, try something else. Keep trying the products. And is it a burden? No, because these are daily necessities. You're basically switching out what you're using with this. So the next time you run out of something, try the Atomy brand. It's not a burden to buy these products because you need it anyway. And then they were like, well, how do you start? You got to use the products. And then I heard share the products and the opportunity. And then attend, you know, attend the system of education. So that's what I did. I used the products. I would share my feelings. Now, nobody had to encourage me to share my feelings. I think I talk a lot. So I was, I was sharing about the products anyway. And then I was so impressed about the system, so impressed by the, you know, the compensation plan. I just felt like I had to tell everybody about it. I got disappointed a little bit that when I would share, they didn't see the vision right away the way I did. And I was, I didn't understand it. I'm like, is it me? Am I not sharing right? Like I used to blame myself. But over the years, I realized it's not the products that's wrong. It's not the atomy that's wrong, right? It, maybe it just didn't fit that person's timing or that person's lifestyle or, or something. So then I started to say, okay, attend the education system. All right, I want to do that because I was hungry for information. And at that first seminar, you know, uh, I got invited to a center and I had tons of questions. I was asking questions during the seminar. I was asking questions when I met my mentor at the center. But then I realized there was no system in English at the time when I started. 
So I really was so enthusiastic, but then I got a little disappointed because there were no English meetings. But thank God, you know, some of my mentors spoke English well enough for me to understand. And little by little, I started to understand what's going on. But I will tell you, even at that time, yes, it started in the Korean community, but even the Korean system, right, they were still learning as well, because I think it was maybe a year or so after Atomy has had come to America, and things were still changing also. And so attended the education system, even though they were only in Korean, I did. I attended the Korean meetings. I understand very little Korean. Now, some people say, well, she, she must be Korean, but why does she speak English so well? Well, a little about myself. I was, uh, I'm born in, I was born in Hawaii in America. My first language is English and my only language is English. I understand just a little bit of Korean, but why did I attend those Korean meetings for Atomy? because I wanted, to, I wanted to be in the loop, right? I wanted to see what was going on. I wanted to catch any information I could, so I would attend. But let me tell you, I don't know how, but in my mind, I said, this is gonna get better. What's happening right now is only temporary. I just had that faith. I just said, well, this is in America, I'm sure we're going to eventually have English meetings, which we did. And I just, I just knew things were going to get better. So sometimes you just have to have that, that faith. And you don't have to have like blind faith right now. Take it from us, who's been here for years. Atomy just gets better and better and better. And the more you observe, you're going to see that's true. Now, I just threw in this picture from the old days. Because if you take a look up there after my name. There's no title after my name, okay? I attended all the meetings. I volunteered myself. Now, I did not volunteer to be an MC. That happened on accident. <laughs> I never wanted to speak in public. I did not want to be in the front. Um, that's not my talent. But what happened was the MC that was supposed to do it he had an emergency at the last minute, he couldn't show up and I was telling everybody else to do it. And there was no one else and they were encouraging me to do it. I just, I don't know where I got the courage. I just said, well, somebody's got to do it. So I just, I just did it. Okay. Sometimes you just got to go with the flow. Just go with the flow and say, and take on that challenge. And so I did. Now, when I, I attended the meetings, I volunteered a lot. Why? Was it because I had members in the audience? No. Was it because I had a big group and I was a leader? No. At this time, I was not even a sales master. And pretty sure many of the seminars that I emceed, pretty sure this in this picture, I didn't have anyone in the audience. I came there by myself. I didn't have any guests that came. So we all start off alone like that. And it's okay because you're going to have more success in the future. But did it stop me? Did I say, well, I'm not going to go because I don't have a guest? Absolutely not. Because to me, I said, well, I got to prepare myself. What if I do meet a partner tomorrow? Am I prepared to lead them? Right? So I wanted to get my experience any way I could. And so I hope that you do that too and keep that in mind. I fell in love with the products. The more I looked into the company, it was just so amazing. The more you look at the details, the better it gets. And the system, I tried the system and I'm like, hey, it works just like they said it does. And how did I share? I'm not a professional speaker. I didn't share complete details about the products or the company because I didn't know how to communicate that well about it. But I shared my feelings and I shared my experiences. And I think people could feel my enthusiasm, right? My positivity. And then I started to have happy consumers. Families were starting to use the products. 
and they were happy with it. And it made me happy too, that I had introduced something and it made them happy. Mm -hmm. And then out of the consumers, then happy business partners, they started to be interested in the business too. So all around, you know, this is a feel good business and I hope that you give it a try. And then the products. So I started to figure out, well, how, how do we actually do this business, right? And the key was the products. That's, the, that's what drives the business is the products. And the points comes from only products. It doesn't come from recruiting memberships. It's about creating consumers, creating happy consumers, you know, who like these products, who start replacing their household products. Why? Because it's, it's better. And then I realized this is the future. I started to listen to the uh, chair, to uh, Chairman Park's messages, how things were going to go online. And I saw the vision of the future. You start to see this happening in society. Yes, things are starting to go online. But you know what I had to do over my years in anatomy? I had to learn a lot of technology. I did not know how to do PowerPoint in the beginning. My mentor knew PowerPoint, so I learned from him. And then, you know, I had many mentors. And that's another thing, too. I learned from lots of people. My partners were using Zoom before I ever went on Zoom. They were already using it. I had to learn from them how to operate Zoom. And let me tell you, I'm still learning, too. But in the future, you know, we do need to upgrade our technology. So for those of you who are saying, well, I don't know computer, I don't know how to do this. Well, you can learn it though. You might not know it now, but if I can learn it, you can learn it. And a global business. I'm so impressed at how fast Atomy is, whatever experience Atomy goes through, right? They learn how to do it better and better. And now countries are opening so quickly. It's such an impressive company. And the PV is what's used to calculate compensation. So if any of you are new, I recommend you take a look at the compensation plan. Don't be overwhelmed, right? Dive right in. Try to understand how, how that works. But if we're promoting products we like, it comes natural to us, right? And these points comes from products, which equals compensation. So always remember, you know, uh, and let's say you don't have to like every product, but if there's a product that you really like, talk about that one because you'll be more authentic that way. This is just an example. You, you can see it on the website that every product has points associated with it. Now, unlimited levels, just create two consumer groups and you're sharing with other people, right? The benefit goes up and down the line. You know, it's not like something else where you think, oh, the person at the top is collecting all the benefit. No, the benefit is up and down the line. And when I registered, I registered in a line just like you, we all do. We all have the same compensation plan. You have the same compensation plan that I do. That's no different. Okay, and then when we started to open more countries and more countries, and when I, you know, when I got a partner in another country, I was like, this is amazing. It's amazing because we created consumer groups. They may be from a different country, but in Atomy, there's no borders. It's, it's all the same. We're all in the same group, like one big global family, right? and this equal opportunity. This is amazing. This is an opportunity I would have never gotten even in the corporate job that I've, that I've had. And this is open to everyone as equal opportunity. You know, you don't have to wait for your sponsor or someone in your upline to move up. You can move up. And that's what's so amazing. I didn't wanna feel limited, right? So you have freedom, nothing is standing in your way. Sometimes we stand in our own way, right? And you don't wanna do that. So it all starts with you. 
this is true now, just like it was before. You know, when we were, we didn't really have, um, we didn't know what, what the best way was. There's no template at the beginning. Even now, there's no template. And I don't think there ever will be one template that works for everyone because this is a people business. And people, their situations are different, right? Everyone's lifestyle is a little different. We may have um, different cultures, but if we just stick to being down to earth and connecting with each other on a human level, you can connect with anyone. It all starts with you, self-improvement. I believe what you believe are your roots. What you believe, your, your mindset, is going to influence everything in your business and how you interact with people, okay? And if you're not getting the success you want, because this is what I did, uh, <laughs> there was a point, I'm telling you, there was a point where I'm like, I think I'm doing everything right. I don't know why this is working. This is not working. And I would think, well, it's the other people, right? It must be the people I'm talking to. Well, maybe that was, maybe it wasn't me. Maybe it was them but I can't control them. All I can do is improve myself. So I took responsibility for my own situation. I took a look at myself and I'm like, I need to identify where I need to improve. And then I did, and I took action to improve that. Now, if everyone, if somebody says, well, I know everything, you know, I'm not doing anything wrong it's gonna be very difficult for them to improve. In order for you to improve, you have to admit that you're not perfect, right? I know I'm not perfect. I'm not an imperial. I still have a lot to learn. And so I think everybody, if you have that kind of mindset, you can improve because in order to improve, you need to change something, right? An improvement in your attitude, in your mindset, in your mood, doesn't that affect everyone around you? Yes. So let's be a good influence and control ourselves. Now, we're not perfect. Oh, let me tell you, in the beginning, I had blow-ups. I had disappointments. I had tears. You know, but you learn. You learn from all your failures. You learn from your mistakes. And as long as you learn that, you can keep moving forward. Now, I've had a lot of people ask, you know, I hear, I hear other people talking to each other too. And they say, well, how long have you been a member? How long have you been a member? And I'm thinking, well, the answer really isn't going to reflect much, okay? Because it's not about time. It's not about how long ago somebody signed as a member. It's about your activity, right? Your activity determines how far you're going to go in your success. Some people register for membership and they just stay barely a customer for years, okay? Maybe they decided later on to try the business. That could be it. Or sometimes people are full-time from the beginning and then other people are part-time. So just because you know how long somebody's been a member, it doesn't actually give you much information, okay? But it is about activity. So success and team goals. We cannot make success by ourselves in Atomy. I don't really feel this is an independent business. I feel like it's a partnership, okay? Now, if you think about, if you have anyone registered under you, then you're already a sponsor. You're not just a partner. You're a partner and a sponsor. If you have anyone registered under you, Okay, now think about your downline. For people who are doing the business, think about your downline. Aren't there many different kinds of members in your downline? Yeah, I think all of us are the same. We have some people who are only consumers. Some people are registered, we have them in our group. They're only consumers, right? Some, some, some people don't even want to do the business or are in any kind of commission or something like that. And then we have members who are business people. I want to, maybe they want to earn commission every, every once in a while. 
but they're not, you know, there's no timeline for them. Okay. They're not in a rush or urgency or anything. And then we have some members who are mastership climbers. They set goals with timelines, right? They do want to earn commission, but they want to earn commission in a certain amount of time. So in your downlines, you're going to have many different types of members. They're here for different reasons. Consumers can one day become business partners, right? They can all change. But what I'm saying is everybody's still a part of the Atomy family, even people who are just consumers. And we need to respect and appreciate anyone who uses the products, okay? Because you need all of them. We're, they're still, they still belong here, okay? Regardless of why they're here in Atomy, as long as they use the product, they're still part of your Atomy family, okay? Now, when I saw this concept, the absolute quality, absolute price, I said, this is universal. I, everybody wants this. So if we're, if the company and we are focused on customer success, right? Giving people the highest quality at the lowest price, that will connect with everybody because that's what I want. I think that's what everybody wants. Now, let me back up here. Remember, we talked about different types of members. Atomy fits any type of lifestyle. There's something in Atomy for everyone, whether they just want to be a consumer, if they want to do the business casually, or if they want to be serious about the business. We have it all. So don't be afraid to talk to anyone. This Atomy is for everybody. Okay, consumers, this is what they want, right? Well, business people need to be consumers first. Okay, they need to definitely don't do this business if you're not even a consumer. So, of course, consumers are going to get some great benefit by being anatomy, by using the products. Now, what about people? They say, well, I'm looking for maybe a side business, right? Just a way to make some extra money. Well, they might be looking at this and we can say, well, anatomy has something for you. It's a proven product that works. Okay, we and anatomy shows all this information on the website. It's a proven business model. You know, anatomy has been ex in existence for many years. This is a proven business model and it's expanding globally. These are things that are really going to attract someone who wants to start their own business, whether it's part time, casual. This is we have we have this for everybody. Okay, and scalable. What does scalable mean? They can, like, the, one of the benefits for me was that when I joined Atomy, I didn't have to pay anything. You know, I was really, I was really broke at that time. I was living off of loans and stuff. I didn't want to invest in anything. And so this is a great opportunity for somebody who has maybe some business sense, right? They want to do something but they don't wanna spend for an investment or they don't have capital. Well, this is what we have for them. Now, I just wanna go through some of my thought process that I thought about. No risk, easy to introduce to others. If I like it, somebody else might like it too. And a contractor for an online shopping mall. Great, why not? Okay, no overhead costs. I don't, I'm not going to lose money trying this opportunity. And it's a good conscience business. A lot of times, even people who are not interested in business, they have a negative uh, idea about a business, right? Thinking that, oh, maybe it's a ripoff or something. But if you look at the facts of Atomy, it's such a good conscience business. So I have some partners, they've never done a business before. Now you you've heard of that, right? Many of um, uh, many people who are in Atomy doing the business right now, they've never had a job before, but they're they're willing to do it. We're willing to do this because of the details. And Atomy is so different from anything else, and it's mutual benefit. Now, if you were to introduce this opportunity to anybody, I mean, why not? 
everything is good. Plus, it's scalable. You want to do something that can multiply, right? How, how is somebody who doesn't have a lot of business experience going to have an international global business on their own? Atomy takes care of so many things for us. This is such a great opportunity. Now, what about, what about those people who are real entrepreneurs, right? They have this entrepreneurial spirit. They have these stories of when they were little, they used to have a, <laughs> when they were a kid, they used to have a business or they were always selling something or, you know, people who have an entrepreneurial spirit, they will find something in Atomy too. And it's scalable. So entrepreneur.com, they say, this is the definition, scalability is one of the most important factors for entrepreneurs. Considering starting a new business or hoping to take a current business to the next level. Scalability, you can grow exponentially with minimal costs. If you have been doing the Atomy business and you have partners in another country, this is, Atomy took care of that for us. So even if you know, uh, uh, like a serial entrepreneur, okay? Don't be afraid to introduce Atomy to them because this is what they're looking for. And you think, well, they're, they're a professional business person. I don't know if they would be interested in Atomy. Please don't judge whoever you're gonna talk to. Just approach them, have courage, show them the opportunity because it might be something that they've been looking for. Because how many times have I heard over the years, Darlene, this is what I've been looking for. All these years, this is what I've been looking for. And I'm sure a lot of you too have approached people and you've heard that same thing. Okay, now when you're doing the business, you have different, I know I used to talk about goals, right? I still talk about goals because I do believe setting goals sets your direction. If you don't have a goal, you don't know what direction you're going in. I don't want you guys to be going sideways, okay? I want you to be going in an efficient, straight line. It's not going to be perfect. My way wasn't perfect. But you have to set goals. Otherwise, you don't have direction. That's pretty simple. It's common sense, right? And sometimes common sense is not a common virtue. Okay? I've had many times somebody mm -hmm. talk to me. And it kind of opened my eyes. And I was like, man, why didn't I see that before? Right? Sometimes we need help to see things. Sometimes we need help to have vision. So your mastership goals, that's one type of goal. Now, if you're doing the Atomy business, you will have different types of goals. This is just one. So keep yourself on track but also help your team to be on track as well. Income goals, that's another goal to keep track of too. Now, I wanna say something here, every group does it different, okay? So I'm not saying my way is better, it depends on the group that you're in and it depends on your downline. I know my upline might be different from yours, right? My downline will be different from yours. So we have to kind of customize how we do the business, right? What's the best fit? So for income goals, you're still keeping track of your mastership goals, of course, but you have income goals in the meantime, okay? Like when you first start. I like when somebody registers for membership, I like to say their first goal is to get 10,000 personal PV. When somebody registers for membership, why did they register? They registered because they're going to use the products, right? Registering for membership gives them access to buy directly from the company. So they want to buy a product. Well, the goal is personal 10,000. And then I don't actually stay at personal 10,000. I always jump right to 300,000. But... In reality, 10,000 personal PV, 
allows that person to collect points into their account, right, from their downline. So then one goal after another. And then what's the next goal? Earning commission. If somebody's here, all of you are here for the Atomy business, don't you want to earn commission? Yes. Set your goal yourself. Keep track of your goal and also help your team support each other. Keep each other accountable. And sometimes we need that. Okay? Keep yourself on track. We're not going to be there all the time. Nobody's going to call you. Well, some, of, some people might have people call them all the time, but sometimes not. So remember, take responsibility for your future. Keep yourself on track and keep your team on track too. And then when you earn your first commission, I think all of us have a memory of our first check, right? <laughs> Receiving our first commission. Well, after that, then what's next? Challenge yourself to earn commission weekly. Keep yourself on track. You're gonna have a good direction if you do this. And then once you start earning commission once a week, twice a week, challenge yourself to get better. If you want success, you gotta do this. And then achieve your sales mastership. Doesn't have to be in this order. It depends on your, your group and your mastership, you know, your mastership plan. But once you achieve your sales mastership and you have that title, remember, you're, you still got another goal. You're not done. You got to maintain your sales mastership. Now, let me tell you through this process, okay, what you don't see here, right, is how do you earn PV, right? How do you earn commission? Well, that's different depending on who you are in your situation, right? How do you approach a new person? We get that question a lot. How do I talk to a new person? There's not one answer for that. It depends on your personality, right? What you feel comfortable doing. Maintaining your sales mastership. Now for, for what I teach in my partners, I want every business person, whether casual or mastership climbers, their goal is to become an auto sales master. How good would it feel? Because it makes me feel really good. How good would you feel helping people to achieve an auto sales mastership with a minimum of $2,000 residual income per month? You know, money's not everything. Money's just a resource, right? But that resource can be used for so many things and it can change the lives of not only them, but their families, right? And their communities where they spend money too. So everybody, you're, you're upgrading the standard of living of, of them, their family, right? Their community. And it's just, it's a feel good business. So I would love it when somebody becomes an auto sales master. And like Chairman Park says, auto sales master is so important. It's actually more than 50% of the way to Imperial. So this, I would like this to be good everybody's goal if they're doing the business. And then of course, after you become an auto sales master, cause I see some auto sales masters here, keep going after that. But this here is enough to get people started and headed in the right direction. And we all had this goal, okay? Everybody has the same goals, whether you're above them or below, every business member has that. Now this is the income goals, right? And recently, there's a pin for auto sales masters. They receive a pin now. How does this, this shows you how important it is and what an achievement it is to become an auto sales master. Amazing, right? I hope that everybody here on this Zoom ends up showing their pin. And if you don't have your pin yet, Make that your goal. We have a ways to go, of course, but you know, I'm, I didn't stop because I feel I want my partners to have the pin. I want my partners to be in the leaders club too, right? We have to pull, help pull people up too. Our goal is our partner's goal, helping your partners reach their personal goals. 
Okay, the foundation. Okay, now, sometimes people rather hear the, oh, tell me what to do, like step by step. But because this is a people business, okay, because this is a people business, we have to look at the foundation. And through my experience, if you don't have a solid foundation, it will be hard to have success, okay? Like when you build a house, houses are built on a foundation, isn't it? Concrete usually, like a concrete solid foundation. If you have a solid foundation, you can build a very high building. But if there's a crack in the foundation, it affects everything and things get off balance. So prepare now, even if you don't have a lot of partners, okay? If you don't have a big group, you still, that's a good thing maybe, you have time to prepare. Don't wait until you have partners to become a leader. Prepare yourself to guide others now. I feel that when you prepare, your opportunity will come. If you're not prepared, your opportunity's not coming yet. You're not ready. It just seems to be a theme that, that kind of works, okay? So prepare yourself now. Your beliefs, your mindset, and your attitude will affect your ability to succeed. People say, oh, that's nonsense. You know, just tell me about the compensation plan. Just tell me about this. But because this is a people business, yes, it is true. Your attitude will affect others, okay? It will affect your motivation. So try to work on that. Try to ask yourself, try to reflect on yourself about your beliefs. If you believe you can do this and be successful, you're right. If you believe you can't do this, you are still right. So whatever you tell yourself and whatever you, whatever you believe, that's your reality. So if you want a better reality, that's the first place you need to start is that's the foundation of what you're going to build here. This is the foundation of your success in your future. Now, integrity. People ask me, well, how did you do it? You know, they think there's some kind of success secret. Well, everybody's different. But for me, I don't think I did anything really special. But I felt like I had good intentions for others. Like, do you take, get taken advantage of sometimes? Yes, but you didn't do anything wrong. So you still can lay your head down with a good conscience at night, right? And you still can go on. That's what keeps you moving forward. So have good intentions for others. Be sincere. Um, and then have courage. When you realize you're responsible for your future, you are responsible for your own future, then you will be more courageous. I was not courageous at the beginning. Um, you know, I didn't want to be in front of other people. I had a lot of fear and I was afraid, but I said, you know what, if I don't do it, who's going to do it? I took responsibility and I said, well, I don't think anyone's going to do this for me. I, I don't think any of you have anyone who's going to really do it for you. Okay. Take responsibility. You are the driver of your car into the future then when you feel that responsibility, you will find the courage to do things you thought you could have never done before and be an overcomer. Did I have failures? Yes. Was I embarrassed when, uh, you know, you try to make a meet, somebody's supposed to show up and you prepare for a meeting with them or, you know, you're going <laughs> to, you expect a lot more people to come and they don't show up. Yeah, I went through the same thing. I think a lot of us did. It was a little embarrassing, right? Looked like you were a failure or you made a big mistake. But be an overcomer. If you learn from your mistakes, you didn't fail. Not really. It's not the end all be all, right? There's still the next day. You still can move forward. Overcome any difficult situation. Because this opportunity is worth it, right? Your future is worth it. Now, I mentioned this before about personalizing atomy, okay? 
I've learned that this is one of uh, something that I do, and maybe it's helped in my success. I've been, the way I see it is I need to guide people. When I first meet someone, right, they could say, well, I'm, I'm so busy, or I have this, or I have that. They think that Atomy cannot fit into their lifestyle. They think they have to be full time. They think they had to do it part time even, right? I have, I put myself in their shoes and I say, well, this is how I see that Atomy can fit into your lifestyle. And then they, they open their mind. They're like, oh yeah, yeah, I see it now. So I feel like part of our job, right? Is to help other people see Atomy can fit into any lifestyle. And over these years, can people benefit from the product? Yes. Can they benefit from the opportunity? Yes. Atomy can fit into any lifestyle. I, I, I truly believe that. And I've had experience about that too. So just share your heart and your feelings about Atomy. And share your enthusiasm. Okay? Love what you do. If you don't love what you do, do you expect people to do it with you? You know, if you don't like it and you're complaining all the time and you're not happy, okay, and you're stressed out, and then you introduce Atomy to someone and so like, come do this with me. They're like, oh, no, who would want to do that with, with you, right? They don't want to be that. They don't want to be in that situation. So always look at what to be grateful for in Atomy. You know how they say um, um, it's not it's not happy people that are grateful. It's grateful people who are happy. I think so, so, it goes something like that. But you get my point. Yes, you know it's not always perfect. I know, but if you truly have good intentions for others, then you love what you do and you enjoy it. And you're trying to help other people to have the same happiness and enjoyment as you. Okay, so I hope that you love what you do so that you could share it with other people. And <laughs> was it easy? Is it, you know, did I go through? I think every leader goes through some hardships. Okay, is it worth it? Absolutely. If you really see the value in this opportunity, the value in using these products, how good it is for you, right? You can go through anything because this residual income and this company and what we're doing, helping other people, man, it feels so good that I have partners who have improved their life. You probably have consumers too, right? The products really help them. Is it worth it for us to continue? Absolutely. But remember, if you feel like, well, nobody's gone through what I went through, I thought the same thing. I was like, no one can relate to me. Nobody's been through what I went through. But as you start talking and opening up your stories to leaders, I realize, wow, they, they went through some hard times too. Doesn't matter what culture, right, that they have. Some people think that, oh, the Korean, Korean community has it better. They say, oh, but, you know, you speak English. So that's why. I will tell you, it's very similar in everybody's situation, in every community, because we're human beings. Now, I will say I'm, I'm of mixed race. My mother was from Korea, and my father is from Hawaii. So I'm actually Korean, Japanese, and Native Hawaiian. And when I grew up, when I grew, up I grew around a lot of diversity. So I had a lot of friends who were all different ethnicities, okay, all mixed races and everything. So I don't think that's really the barrier here. We have a lot of diversity in anatomy now. And as we tell our stories, it doesn't matter what culture you come from. As a human being, right? Trying to do a people business and, and interacting with people, we all have similar stories. So you're not alone. Remember to dream big. Why not go for it? If we could do it, you could do it. And remember though, you have to achieve small goals, okay? That will lead to your big goals. 
So when you write out your goals, right, your short-term goals and your long-term goals, and as you achieve small goals, you get more stronger. And then make step-by-step -step action plans. I'm going to leave you with this. Now, you've heard a lot of things. Sorry, I hope, it, you know, I hope you remembered at least some of it. I don't expect you to remember everything. But just remember this as you're watching videos, as you're learning from mentors, and you learn from partners, and you learn from the Atomy community. Knowledge isn't power, because you heard knowledge is power. Well, I think knowledge is not power until you use it. So knowledge is power if you apply it. So after hearing this, okay, I want you to write your action plan. What are you going to do tomorrow? Step by step, you need to write out a plan in detail. What are you going to do tomorrow? What are you going to do the next day? What are you going to do for the week? I think we all do to-do lists, right? Where's your Atomy action plan? I hope that you implement. If you felt, oh, that was so good, or you had an idea during this, I hope you implement it soon and be timely about it. Thank you so much, everybody. Thank you for your time. I really appreciate all your support and, and for being here today. Thank you so much. Wow, amazing. Can we give us some Atomy love to Ooh. our star master, Darlene Kim? Ooh. Wow, I saw so many faces. You know, I was listening to Darlene, of course, but I was seeing so many people thinking and reflecting. It was so powerful, I think, in the simplicity, the, the sincerity of the story that Darlene told us about her success roadmap. And I know she gave this with love because I saw everybody absorbing it like energy, powerful atomy energy from the love of our star master, Darlene Kim. So one more time, let's just share that love. Thank you so much, Darlene. And I know you were thinking, you were all thinking and you have all these ideas, but we do have a chance now for Q&A, questions and answers. And um, star master, Darlene uh, Kim, would you be uh, open to handling some questions from the, uh, the members tonight? Yeah, sure. Thank you so much. Okay. Well, if you do have a, that would be wonderful if you could stick around. And uh, if you do have a question, could you raise your hand either physically or by hitting the emote, the reactions button? And then uh, I think one of our people on the, on the control panel will, will pick you up and have you ask a question. Okay. Looks like we have uh, Mike to ask a question. Hi, Star Master, Darlene. Thank you for your sharing. My name is Mike Surjadi from Atomy Canada. I have a question, uh, Star Master Darlene. Out of your, uh, because you are in the Royal Leaders Club member right now, what was your most toughest journey in Atomy and, and how did you overcome it? Oh, toughest journey. I really can't pick one because at every stage of Atomy, I feel like I, I'm not the same, I didn't come to Atomy like this, right? I feel like I'm not really the same person that I was when I first met Atomy because of personal situation and because of Atomy, right? I can't pick one difficult journey. I think um, there's been many difficulties and challenges, but I will say that at the end of the day, it was, um, it identified something in me that I could change myself. You know, so every challenge wasn't just about um, the other person or the other situation. I always turned it into a lesson. And so every challenge I did go through, I looked for, number one, I looked for the positive in it. Okay, because I, I believe if you look for the positive, you're going to find it. It's never 100% anything, right? So I looked for the positive. But then I also, well, what can I do? What, what am I going to do if this happens again? So I changed myself to either be better prepared, right? It identified something in me that maybe was weak that I could improve. So that's why I don't think that I, I have identified one specific thing because I took ownership that it's never 100% somebody else's fault, right? Right could be like 90%, <laughs> but 
you can't do anything about that. You can only do about what you can control. And so I, I think that every challenge taught me something that made me better prepared for the future. So, oh, I've had, I've had situations where in the beginning, when I was doing the business, like I said, it was very naive, right? And I believed everything that customers would tell me or new people would tell me. And uh, I didn't realize <laughs> that, oh, well, how come they didn't do what they said, you know? And also, when I was doing the business by myself, I kind of put myself in a little bit of a risky situation. And I learned from that. And I taught, I turned it around into a good thing. Because then I could help other people avoid that pitfall. Okay, so I think I was very naive at the beginning. Um, I didn't have a lot of friends or a big family. And in this business, we meet all kinds of people, right? Anyone can become an Atomy member. So there's not one situation, but definitely I learned to kind of be careful of, of people, you strangers, you don't know. <laughs> um, I tend to get close with people very quickly. Okay, I need to protect myself a little better. And also, when people say things, and maybe they didn't do exactly what they said, right? I learned something over the years to tell myself, well, all people are doing the best they can, and they can't do any better right now. And it helps you to um, not be as judgmental, and it helps you to have empathy. And then you can continue and it just, it doesn't bother you as much. It doesn't damage you and hold you back. Okay, sorry, I don't have one exact example for you, but thank no you for problem. the question. Thank you, thank you. Okay, there must be some other questions out there. I can see some inquisitive minds. Uh, oh, here we go. Uh, um, Sales master Edna Yuman, could you raise your hand? Oh, now we can't see you. Okay, while we're waiting for that, I did hear uh, uh, Star Master uh, Darlene Kim that you had a little bit of hesitation to be a public speaker. And I, I maybe some other people have that hesitation, especially when they first join. Um, can you share a little bit about how you got yourself out of that position and onto the, into the front of the room and to be able to speak? Was that, was that um, something you had to overcome? And how did you do it? Well, the first time, um that I, I did MC, it really was like a very pressured moment. Uh, <laughs> we had very little staff at that time and uh, there wasn't anyone else who could do it. I think back in the day, we used to have one speaker who did product and compensation like the whole evening, just one speaker. And then we had someone operating the audio vi visual, right? Doing the computer and the speakers. Um, so there was no one left. I was uh, kind of like, co I was called coordinator of the seminar. <laughs> but, you know, I only had to coordinate the beginning and the end. So I was the only person to do it. So I felt, I did feel a little pressure. I'm like, there's no one else. I got to do it. Even if I don't go do a good job. They're not going to blame me for it because I was the only one. After that, I remember that night, people came up to me and they were like, oh, you did such a good job. Oh, your voice and all this and that. And I'm going, first of all, I know I didn't do a good job. It was the first time. I didn't even know what to say. I didn't know what to do. I would just speak a couple sentences, go sit back down. And then someone else would tell me, okay, this is what you got to say next. So I didn't feel like I did a great job. And I'm like, I think they're just telling me that because they want me to do it again. It was kind of like their encouragement. Okay. Yes, I did it again because of their encouragement. So it really was the encouragement of the Atomy community. And they gave me the courage. They made me feel comfortable that I could do it again. And they were on my side supporting me. But it just got a little more and little more. So I was MC. 
then I never wanted to be on video. I remember this too. And uh, I had one of my mentors say, you have to get used to it. You have to get used to speaking in public. This is gonna be your future. You don't have a choice. Tell yourself you have to do it. And so I changed my mindset. I changed my attitude about it. And I accepted, I accepted it. Like I have to do it. So I kept on doing it. The first time I was recorded on video, oh my goodness. I watched that playback. I felt so uncomfortable seeing myself, listening to myself, you know, but over and over, I got used to it, right? Stopped being so self-conscious about it. And with the help of mentors and the community, I was able to find the courage. Now, I will have to say, you know, I have to give thanks to God. You know, I didn't make all these opportunities on my own. I just prepared myself and opportunities just came. And sometimes it's God's hand, right? And, and his message coming through other people too. So sometimes you just got to trust the process. And <laughs> a lot of times when I'm asked to speak, was I ready? No, but I just said yes, because I trusted the process. And the more experience you get, the better, you know, you get, I think. So sometimes just, just say yes, and you'll figure out how to do it. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> thank you for sharing that. Okay. So if you do want to ask a question, we're going to take the next people, or if you want to share something that really struck you, um, that really made you, wow, I didn't think about that before. Or, oh, I really need to do that. We'd love to hear that as well. Okay. We have, um, um, Wendai Sue, Wendai Sue, but you have to show your face before we can call you. Yes, I have okay, a then question. We'll, we'll, yes. Oh, Wendai Sue, okay, yes. go ahead. Hi, yeah, um, I'm from Florida. I'm a staff master. Um, I want to ask, can the, um, I, do you have a lot of members when, when you talk to them at the beginning? Uh, they very exciting and said, oh, okay, invite me to the meeting or seminar or whatever. I'll send me the video and then later on they ignore you and not even answer and not even show up and and uh, what should you do about those people to uh, uh, forget them or just leave them alone, don't have to follow up them anymore. <laughs> I I don't know. What should I do sometimes when I need uh, uh, members like that? Yes, well, I think I think that's just a natural, um, that just happens naturally in the business to everybody. So it's not just you. So I wouldn't take it too personal. We all have that kind of experience. And you have to take it on a case-by-case -case basis, right? You know that person personally, maybe that's just their style. OK, maybe they you don't take it personally. Oh, that's just their style. You know, I'll send the video again. But be persistent. I would I would keep doing it and be persistent because, um, you know, sometimes you have to talk to somebody so many times, so many times before they actually hear what you said. <laughs> it's just human nature sometimes. Yeah, maybe you're not that way. But there's so many people that are different from you. And in your downline, not everybody's going to be just like you are. So, yes, you do have to forgive, right? And over time, you'll realize, oh, that's just that person's style. But you'll meet somebody else who has a different style. You're not always going to have that kind of experience. So just keep going. You'll get better experiences. You will. So it's just text them or you would like to call them? Okay, so it depends on the person. That's why I say try to personalize how you approach them, right? Some people, they don't like direct phone calls. Some people like text, right? Some people, you send them the video, they don't watch the video. Maybe they want a video chat with you. They want to learn they don't want to learn from a stranger on a video, maybe, 
right? But they know you personally, they would trust you more. And so what I encourage partners to do is don't rely on other people or don't rely 100% on a video. You learn first and then you can teach other people. Okay, because they know you personally, right? They trust you more than they would trust someone on a video or sometimes. And some people like video because maybe they're too close with you, right? And they wanna hear from someone else. So I would try all different ways and then observe which way work best for that person. Thank you, thank, thank you, you uh, Star, Star thank Master you. Darlene. Let's, let's go move on to uh, another uh, person who has been waiting, uh, Sales Master Edna, and then we'll go to uh, Jeweler Valencia. So first, Sales Master Edna Yuman, go ahead. Um, hello, um, thank you so much, uh, Star Master Darlene, for that amazing uh, journey and vision of Atomy. Uh, my question is, uh, how do you um, recognize uh, uh, your partner? You know, like, um, you know, that starts with loving the products, but, you know, a, a lot of people are not really into business or into, um, you know, they don't open their hearts. It's like, they just want a product. So how do you, um, you know, I mean, I know it's a process, but, you know, just share your one of your experience on how you uh, choose your partners. Thank you. Well, thank you for the question. I actually, you know, I'm grateful to anyone who uses the Atomy products, even if they don't want to do the business, right? Um, it's still good for you in the business. Anybody who uses the products, right? That's PV. But you can't change somebody from like, you know, you have different categories of members, okay? Some people just wanna be a consumer, but you see, oh, they can make a great business person. You know, they could do this business. I want them to do the business, but it's not really what we want. It's what the individual wants. So if the individual only wants to use the products, then we can't push too much they know we do the business. And if they want to do the business, we just got to make sure that we're there for them, right? And that our door is always open if they have any questions. And we do remind them sometimes, we share what we're doing and maybe we can influence them. But we can't change them or control them for what they want. Maybe it's just not the right time or maybe it's just not the right fit at all. Not everybody is going to do the Atomy business with you. And that's a reality. But if you have people who are using the product, that's the base foundation of your business, right? We do need a lot of consumers. Why do some people make more income than others? It's because they have more consumers registered under them. And they may have more business people. But sometimes people say, well, I have a long line. My leg is very, very big. To them, they think it's big, but maybe it's not really, right? So you need more consumers and you need more business people. So you just need to talk to more people. It's okay. Some, you're, you're tr that's correct. Some people are not open, not right now, to hearing about the business opportunity. But what I would say is make yourself successful, right? Your example could be what opens their mind in the future. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Star Master Darlene Kim. Well, we have another a, a gentleman now who's been eagerly waiting and has another question. So let's hear now from Goler Valencia. Go ahead. Hi, good evening and good morning. I'm Goler Valencia from Augusta, Georgia. Now my question is, how to handle rejection? Are we should be very persistent in convincing them to use the product or to join this uh, Atomy company? Well, I are you talking about like rejection? They don't want to do the business with you? Yes, and as a consumer as well, using the product as well. Well, we have to respect their choice. 
But um, I would say, how do you not feel hurt? How do you handle rejection? Well, in the beginning, when people are new, um, let me just, I don't want to say talk for everybody, but I'll talk for myself. When I was new, I wore my heart on my sleeve. Okay. I was sensitive to everything. Yes, I was sensitive to rejection because I saw the vision clean and clear. And I couldn't understand why other people did not see what I saw. And then over the years, I realized two people can be looking at the same thing, but we see something totally different because we have different life experiences, right? We, you just never know. So in the beginning, yes, I did not handle rejection well. I used to just spin my mind and try to figure out why they rejected it. You know, I don't understand. And there's going to be times where you're just not going to understand why they rejected it, why they didn't like it. Okay. Sometimes you're never going to be able to figure that out because that's in their, in, it, that's in their mind. And we can't be 100% them. So over time, I said, well, I can't keep, you know, feeling so deeply when I get rejected. So I realized it was because I was insecure. And so the solution was I needed to be more confident and believe that what I was doing, there was nothing wrong with it, that it wasn't me. Okay. Maybe it was the way I approached them. You know, I'll, I'll own that and try to improve. But when you, how to handle rejection, I would say, be more confident. Now, that's another question. How do you be more confident? You have to be 100% convinced in what you're doing and love what you do. One of the keys to being con uh, confident, because that could be a whole nother lecture. Um, one of the keys is be more, uh, what does it say? It says competency leads to confidence. So the better you are at it, right? If you can do something really well, that gives you confidence. So get your, get more academy experience and then you would realize. Now in the beginning, do you know why people, they can't handle rejection? Because they haven't had many successes. But as you get your experience, you're gonna talk to someone, they're not gonna reject it, they're gonna love it. And the more you have of that, then you know the person who rejects it, well, it's, it's kind of their loss. That's not your loss, okay? So you can handle it by being more confident. If you're skeptical, you're not sure if atomy is the right thing, do your research, ask your mentors, talk to more successful people, convince yourself first, how are you going to convince anyone else if you're not really confident, right? As you get more confident, people will be more comfortable to do the business with you. They'll feel safe with you because you're so confident and knowledgeable. So I just, I just, it, it was, I mean, it's, nobody likes rejection. <laughs> I, mean, I think no human being likes rejection. You're not alone, right? But when it comes to atomy, we are confident that we're doing very good for people and we're sharing good things. So you don't need to take it too personal. <laughs> well, thank, thank you, you very much for the confidence and convincing. Uh, yeah, thank you. Well, well said. Thank you very much, uh, Darlene. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Now, we, we may have ch a chance for one or two more questions, or if you have something that really struck you, that really impressed you tonight, that really made you say, that's it. Thank you, Darlene. And you haven't shared it yet. Uh, we have a chance for, oh, there we go. Okay, let's hear from Diamond Master Bill. Hello, Darlene and everyone. I just want to add on to what you were saying earlier about when you get these disappointments, you got to remember, it's not you they're turning down. It's the Atomy business, or it's the, the company, or it is the products. Now, Gilliard, you asked, when, when do you drop them? Well, we never drop people. And here's an instance. When Arsenia and I first started Atomy, 
Arsenio went to friends of hers because what do we do? We go friends and family first, right? They all say, no, 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 they don't want nothing. They're doing some, they're using other products. They're using other products. Well, as time passes by and Arsenia is using these products and they see the changes in her skin texture, her face, she's actually getting younger and she's 67 years old. Okay. People saw this. What are you doing? What are you using? I want it. I want it. So within the last two years, the ones who are saying no the loudest have now joined us in Atomy. They're buying products and they're buying a lot of the products. Instead of, no, I don't want nothing to do with it, getting upset and walking away and leaving them, just let them go. You didn't leave them, but when you get with them, you know, you see your friends after a while, you hadn't seen each other. That's what happens. So when you have people say no in the beginning, that's okay. Because you know, and everybody else in, these, in this Zoom meeting of two or 324 people right now know that they will come around eventually. And I used to tell my friend who I sponsored in Atomy, you don't shotgun effect, boom, blast, blast, blast. You drip. Give them a little information now and again. Okay. Now, how do we do this? Personally, I prefer a phone call because that's two-way communication. If you send an email or you send a text, that's one-way communication. There's two things that goes wrong. One is you think they got the message when in reality they didn't, or the second one is you think they got the message and they're just flat out ignoring you, which what's it do? Makes you mad again. So the best thing to do is say, okay, fine, not for now, but maybe later. Bill, I want to just interrupt for a minute because we have a couple people and we do have to end soon. So okay. could we have you back as a speaker maybe? Because well, you have uh, so much to share. Yeah, well, anyway, I, I was just finishing up there, Sil. So I just want to say that's what we're, we've been doing. And it, it is starting to turn into a successful Atomy business. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Bill. Okay, we, we are running out of time. So if you keep your uh, questions uh, short and your or if you have a comment, very short, because we do have to uh, finish up. But uh, we do have, um, I think we have uh, Christina. So just very quickly, Christina. Hi, good evening, everyone. So uh, Darlene, I just like, uh, would just like to thank you for a very um, inspiring uh, presentation tonight. And I'm doing a Zoom meetings for my team. And as you said, the more that you plug in, the more you will learn. And I've got so much from you tonight that I can use in my own Zoom meeting. So thank you so much. Oh, thank, thank you, you. Good to hear. Thank you, Christina, for sharing. And Priscilla, Priscilla, could you also just uh, keep it short as well? Oh, yes. Hi. Yeah, I, I, I didn't have any question. I just like Sil said, I just wanted to share three pointer that really struck me. First of all, uh, I've been following Darlene's uh, vision spe uh, speech for some time now, and she's so great. And she's so inspirational. And thank you so much for sharing all the details of what you are, you've been doing. So the, my first pointer that I, I really kind of made me to think was uh, prepare, she's, uh, when she said, prepare yourself now to be a leader because opportunity will come when you are ready. So I know I'm in the beginning stage right now. So this is where I have to prepare. So that speech means when I am preparing and when I'm you know, listening to these things, when I'm in the hooked into system, I'm doing something right. So she just gave me a confirmation that I am doing something right. So thank you for that one pointer. The second pointer that was very good to me was that uh, true good intention to others and love sharing with people, the road to success will be easier. So that was a really great pointer because everybody wants to do a good business. Not You don't want to feel guilty about anything and you want to just you know do good thing and making money at the same time, which is perfect. Thank, thank you so much, Priscilla. And what, oh, okay. The we, I'm sorry, okay. the last one. 
it really made me to do is the last one that she uh, ended with. It's a time for an action plan. Knowledge isn't power until it is applied. So it's time for me to write, 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 write my plans. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Priscilla. And everybody waited until the last minute, right? So very quickly, one minute to gel, and then, and then we're going to finish up. So, okay. Master Joe. Uh Hi, good evening. Thank you so much, uh, Star Master Darlene. I have a lot of notes, but I'm just going to say, it's, you said it's not about time, it's about activity. And yeah. this oh, one, hi. yeah. <laughs> so activity, that's very important. And your beliefs are the roots. So thank you. Thank you so much, Darlene. I learned so much today. Thank you. You're thank welcome. you, Sales Master Joe. And one minute, Diamond Master Wang, if you could, just one minute. Or less. Okay. Hi, Miss Darlene. I just want to say thank you also because uh, first time I heard uh, Miss Darlene, I guess it's like 2018 or 2018. But when I heard her in North Carolina, Faith Bell, I really like her speech. So right now, even like I was from uh, my work, so I'm really trying to get on the Zoom. So I really need to come home because I need to listen to her. And thank you so much. What I really like on the I'm listening is like prepare yourself how to be a leader. When the leader is time come, you will be already there. I guess I'm just doing that one already. Well, thank you, Miss Darlene, uh, Star Master, Miss Darlene. Thank okay, you share, all. Share thank uh, you. people, and people thank you for all. I'm going to turn it over now to our royal master. Jason Shim for announcements, and then we'll go to our motto. So Jason Shim, could you share some announcements, please? Yes, okay. Thank you, everyone, for um, uh, uh, participating in this wonderful Zoom meeting for our group, All About Atomy. Uh, I'm, re I'm, really, I'm really glad that we have a great night today because, you know, Don and Kim shared a, a very, very good vision and from a very bottom of the heart. And I, I, I'm pretty sure everyone learned a lot tonight so i'm really glad and let me share my uh, ppt and i'm gonna give you a little bit of a uh what is that uh, announcement okay so we had a, a great night already with the darling kim stam as a brand new royal leaders club member and uh we'll be having another uh, zoom meeting with all of our atomy with different languages uh next week tuesday will be a korean zoom meeting with a Star Master from Korea. She's an amazing lady. A lot of people uh, follow her, and she's a Royal Leaders Club member as well. And her mother, her mother is also a Royal Leaders Club member too. And we have another Royal Master coming from Malaysia, Alex Ong, Royal Master in Chinese. So if you learn Chinese or if you speak Chinese, welcome. And the mm. uh, 20th, <laughs> we, uh, we are preparing for another amazing uh, Zoom meeting with the Spanish people who habla español, Sur <laughs> uh, America. Okay, so we'll be having uh, these amazing Zoom meetings from all of our atomy. So be prepared and uh, bring a lot of friends uh, from all over the world. I believe we have a lot of people from India, Singapore, Hong Kong, Australia and uh, what else, Indonesia, and then I saw somebody else from other country, but anyway. So we'll be having an amazing, amazing uh, business together and make a fun together and make a success together and amazing. Thank you so much, everyone. Still back. Thank you, Royal Master Jason Shim, and, and thank you everybody for participating. Thank you very much our Royal Leaders Club and Star Master Darlene Kim for a fantastic presentation of her vision. So many good pointers and so many things that we can be inspired by. One more time, let's thank her. And remember, uh, financial freedom, financial freedom. This is the weekend of freedom in the United States. And so it's a great topic, right? Throw your hair back. They'll say, oh, your hair smells good. What are you using? Atomy shampoo. <laughs> Throw out your hemoheme at the barbecue. It's good, you know? Have your fine after you eat. Great weekend for sharing if you're going to barbecues. So here we are. We're going to close up now. We, unfortunately, we have to say goodbye to each other. So let's have a rousing cheer. Is everybody ready to say our motto? 
Yeah. Yes. Let's go. Yes. Let's go. Thank you.